A very good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service. The book of Nahum says this, The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. And so we open with these words, O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. So now let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Before our first hymn, we're going to have a, a moment to think about the things that prevent us from enjoying God's love, God's presence in all its fullness. And um, we're going to take a moment to think not only about uh, the things we might have said or not said, the things we might have done or not done, but actually we're going to think about our attitudes. So you might actually just want to press pause for a moment, get a piece of paper and write down maybe some of the attitudes you know that you struggle with. In the Bible, Psalm 32 says this, I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. Here's a principle that runs throughout scripture that actually God doesn't expect us to be perfect. He knows our weaknesses. But all the way through, every time a man, woman acknowledges their fault, their iniquity before God, he is faithful and just. He's forgiving and all loving. So maybe you've written these issues on your piece of paper. We're going to bring all our issues, all our sin before God's holy flame, his holy flame of love, of mercy, of forgiveness that consumes all of our sin. We say together now, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things that we ought to have done. And we have done those things that we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us sinners. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent. According to your promises, declare to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant a most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a disciplined, righteous and godly life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And so the Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and forgive you your sins. In the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so as a forgiven people, uh, we now sing together and worship with our first hymn.
Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is taken from Paul's short letter to Philemon, as I think his name is pronounced, verses 1 to 7. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Apphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this is a church and this is a steeple. Open the doors and out come the people? Well, not at the moment, of course. Um, we're going through a sermon series where we're asking ourselves, what does it mean to be a church? Because obviously there's the church building, but as you all know, church is always, always people. But what do the people do? What does it mean for a people to be church? And over uh, the next few weeks, we'll be looking at that. And we're going to go right back to the very earliest moments of the church, the very beginnings of the church, to look at what they did. What did they do to be church? And in Acts 2, verse 42, we find four things. This is what it says. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, number one, and to fellowship, number two, to the breaking of bread, number three, and to prayer, number four. The apostles' teaching, the breaking of bread. <laughs> I got that wrong. The apostles' teaching, <laughs> the fe fellowship, the breaking of bread, and prayer. And uh, last week we began to think about what does it actually mean uh, to devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching. And one of the things it means is, of course, sharing the apostles' message, which was Jesus' message, which was the gospel message. But actually, in order to be able to share something, we need to be able to understand it and make sense of it ourselves. And today we're going to be thinking about how we can devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching, not simply as individuals, but actually together. Are we going to understand all there is to understand by simply turning up to church on a Sunday and listening to maybe someone like me talk for, well, between six to 20 minutes, depending which service you're going to? Now, the answer to that is obviously not. So is there another way? What did the early church do? Well, what we discover from this morning's reading is this. Paul was writing, he was uh, 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 locked up under house arrest, so he knew all about lockdown, and uh, he wrote this uh, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, also to Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. Right from the earliest days, what it meant to be church was actually to meet with one another in our homes. Why is this a good idea for us now? Well, I'm going to give five reasons. Reason number one, Jesus did it. Now Jesus spoke uh, from boats, he spoke on mounts, he spoke in valleys, uh, he spoke at the temple, he spoke to all sorts of great crowds, but actually some of his most wonderful teachings and some of the most extraordinary events in his life took place when 
he was in people's homes. If meeting together in other people's homes was a good idea for Jesus, surely it's a good idea for us. And now for reason number two. Perspective. I have really enjoyed our thoughts for the days uh, every morning that come Monday to Friday. It's been really wonderful having different people giving a very simple thought for the day based on scripture each day. If you haven't managed to catch sight of them, do have a look on our YouTube channel uh, or on the links on our Ben Binfro website. The reason I've enjoyed it so much is actually everyone has come up with something slightly different, with a different view on really familiar scriptures. And what it does for me is it gives me perspective. It gives a sort of a, a breadth, a width to my views on the most important and central teachings to the faith that I uh, follow. Coming together as a group and being devoted to the Apostles' teachings together means that there isn't just one teacher. We all come in with uh, thoughts and ideas. We all come in uh, with inspiration from the Holy Spirit who doesn't work just through one person but works throughout the church all with our different gifts and so whether you've been a Christian one minute or whether you've been a Christian a hundred years actually we can all learn from one another. So number two is perspective. Number three Number three is asking together, searching together. Jesus said, seek and you will find. Now, seek and you will find is uh, something that Jesus says to me as an individual, as a person, that I would go after Jesus. I would seek out the Lord with all of my heart, mind, body and soul. But actually, this isn't just an individual activity. It's a collective activity activity and it's really important that as much as we share inspiration from one another and the things that we do know it's also important that together we look for God's way and we find out how we can apply the Apostles teachings to our lives not only as individuals but together collectively imagine this imagine I had lost a precious coin in the lovely huge vicarage garden I could look for it for myself, uh, but it would take me forever. However, if I invited all of the congregations of the benefice to come into my garden with me, we'd find the coin very quickly. We can find some wonderful depths, some real treasures uh, in the Apostles' teachings if we look together. Treasures that we might otherwise miss out on if we just rely on our own individual efforts. That's reason three. We can ask together. Here's number four. Communication and critical thinking. I don't know what your experience of uh, lockdown has been like, but I know that for me it's uh, made me develop all sorts of skills that I really didn't have before. Uh, one of them has, for example, and I'm quite proud of this one, has been cutting my own hair. Oh yes, this is all my work. Just don't look at the back. As well as this, of course, uh, like many other vicars, we've had to make videos. We've had to upload things to YouTube. We've had to edit videos, all sorts of new skills. And hopefully what we'll see over the coming weeks is as we practice these new skills, we'll get better at it. And actually it's the same with the Apostles' teachings. It's really good to come together as Christians so that we learn how to communicate, so that we can practice on one another, and so we can get to the nitty-gritty of what the key truths are that will enable others to learn uh, about, but more important, to get to know Jesus. So it's really good to come together uh, in our homes and to share how we might communicate better with one another, with our neighbours uh, about what Jesus has done. And as well as that, 
it's really good to come together to develop our critical thinking skills. Why do you believe what you believe? It's really important to be able to give an answer. And actually, being able to gently question one another and one another's views is absolutely crucial if we're, able, if we're going to develop into a really healthy, thriving church that knows why it believes what it believes and is also able to communicate why it believes what it believes. And now finally, reason number five, accountability. Yeah, no one really likes that word. I certainly don't. But it is good to be accountable to one another in terms of, well, how we study scripture and the extent to which we really know and understand the apostles' teachings. Now, I'm very lucky. I'm a vicar. And so I'm effectively, I have to read the Bible. I can't get away from studying scripture. But before I was a vicar, and before I worked full-time in the church as a youth worker, I found it very difficult to study by myself. I would have times, especially when I first came to faith, where I, 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 would, I would read uh, chapter upon chapter upon chapter voraciously. I used to absolutely love scripture. It was sweet. But as the months went by after my coming to faith, actually I found it quite hard. It was a hard slog. But the thing that saved me was belonging to a home group, knowing that once a week I would be looking at the apostles' teachings with others, that they would hold me gently accountable. Yeah, and you're a bit quiet this evening. Have you really no views on this passage? You normally do, etc. And so that's my final reason for coming together uh, with one another to devote ourselves to the apostles' teachings. We need one another. The game, uh, if it were a game, Christianity would never be a game of singles. It has always been a team effort. So let's help and support one another to devote ourselves to Jesus and the Apostles' teachings. I'm now going to hand over to Ian and Madeline Black as they lead us in prayer. Let us join together in prayer, even though we are separated at present. And let our prayers join as one with those of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. So let us pray. Father, we offer thanks for all those who are working so hard at present, for all in health care, doctors, nurses and paramedics who are on the front, front line against coronavirus, and for all who work in public health. For all volunteers who provide a lifeline for the self-isolating and the elderly in supplies and emotional support. For all who work to provide our food, farmers, growers, processors, distributors and sellers. For all who provide us with essential services, the post, water, sewerage, waste collection and utilities. Author of All That Is Good, we pray for your strength in all who work so hard for us at this time. Protect and guard all those who work for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Let us remember in our prayers all those who suffer. For those currently ill or recovering, or those worried about the health of their loved ones for those wearied by the abnormal demands of their work, for those sorely tested by being confined in cramped accommodation, for all suffering mental anguish and separation, for all who are in positions of authority, politicians and administrators facing frustrations and pressures in decision-making. Holy God, we pray for the comfort of all who are stressed or afflicted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world. Conflicts still go on, 
conflicts between nations, within nations, conflicts and lies in the media and online. Author of Peace, we pray for your peace. Turn the hearts of war makers and raise up peacemakers. Warm our own hearts, God of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us remember in our prayers all those who have sadly died in this pandemic and commend them to our Father in heaven. We give thanks for all the faithful departed and pray that we, like them, may share the joy of your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. Raising our prayers to you, O Lord, we ask you to write your law of love on our hearts. Merciful Merciful Father, Father, accept accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us join together then in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
And now a final prayer of blessing. May El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty, who loves you, protect you. May Jesus Christ, his Son, who died for you, save you. And may the Holy Spirit, who broods over the chaos, fill you with his presence, intercede for you and in you for others at this time. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love now and forever. Amen. And so we go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. That's the end of our service. I look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, just a couple of notices. Do look on our website for details of uh, uh, an Alpha course that uh, is starting. Uh, well, there's one this week. There's one next week. Uh, if you've never done an Alpha course, you'd be interested. There's one being run by HTB on a virtual basis. And I would strongly encourage you uh, to uh, go and do this if you've not one, done one before. Uh, also, uh, just uh, uh, another little notice which is about home groups. I've talked about home groups today and that might seem very strange because of course at the moment we're not allowed to meet together in one another's homes but actually uh, pretty much every home group but one I think in our benefits is meeting virtually. So if you'd be interested in joining a home group why don't you pop me an email or possibly uh, that's yan y -A -N -N, at benbinfro.org or uh, alternatively give me a phone call or uh, you can also uh, try and contact Christopher Ogilvy Thompson and all those details in terms of who to contact and how are available on our website www.benbinfro.co.uk and now that's it for now bless you goodbye